Hey, peace, love, and light, Scorpios. Welcome, welcome, welcome to First Eye Visions. I am Q and I am here to do a general reading for you, my beloveds. I will all as well. I will all peace. I will you all are feeling powerful. I will you all are standing strong out there, standing on your square. To anyone who may be new to my channel, I do general readings for Scorpios. My spiel is eat the fish, spit out the bones. If it doesn't apply, let it fly by. This is also a timeless reading, so whenever you find yourself clicking on the video is exactly the divine timing intended for you to do so. To all who are returning, you already know what it is. Love is love is love is love. I would like to call upon the elements of water, fire, earth, air, ether, and spirit, our shade. I'd like to ask our angels, archangels, ancestors, spirit guides, deities, animal totems, earth, mother Gaia, universe, source, the divine, most high God, our creator, shine a powerful message of love and light. And I call personally upon Baba Obatala, Mama Oya, to bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards. I call also upon Archangel Mikael, Gabriel, Archangel Uriel, Metatron, to bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards. And so it is, so mode to be Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. So beloved Scorpios, how are we doing? I'm going to do an energy read. It's going to be just a check-in, just to check temperature. You know how I do. want to see what's coming in for us, what's going out, what's going on. I am also a Scorpio for all who are new. I don't know if I said that already. I am also clairaudient. So I listen to music and incorporate those messages in the reading. Right now we have Nicole Ray featuring Missy Elliott. I got what you need. So someone is probably trying to propose some sort of offer. Um, letting you know they got what they need. Um, and you're going to have to make a decision and I'm hearing that you're going to need to make, uh, a very conscious decision. So perhaps maybe meditating, you know, sitting on it right now. Okay. So the name of this song is, hold on. This is Maxi Priest's Art of Seduction. So somebody's trying to seduce you. And that's why I was picking up on the energy that you needed to kind of sit with, you know, whatever you're being proposed, like you need to marinate on it for a little minute. Don't just jump right in. Um, we have R and R. I just happened to look down and this is my, uh, rest and rejuvenate, rest and recalculate, rest and recuperate. So this is like my re-re card. So that's about, you know, like emotionally withdrawing from a situation and going within. So there's going to be someone trying to seduce you. So, and, and, and I'm just getting a little, um, I'm hearing the word sinister right now. So it's not like it's with good intention. So let me turn this down a little bit. Maybe you'll be seducing somebody because they say maybe someone you know is being seduced. You know, and, and I feel like because he's saying she knows she has a body in motion and she knows how to use it. So it's almost as if they're saying that someone is being seduced. Um, she makes me want to want her. She makes me want to want her. And that's the song from the, um, I believe it was how Stella got her groove back. So I don't know, because being that that's from the how Stella got her groove back, maybe this could be you. You know, maybe someone feels seduced by you. We'll tap in, tune in. But I was still feeling sinister um, energy and vibes. So I do feel like um, perhaps someone is being seduced. Um, and it's not with good intention. So we'll delve, dive, and go a little deeper. I just saw for, forwards always, um, forwards ever, backwards never. So let's go ahead, cut this deck, see what's coming in, going out, going on. This will be the overall energy surrounding the situation. And we have R&R. &R. So yes, the divine is telling you to um, emotionally withdraw for a minute and center yourself. That R&R &R is rest and rejuvenate, rest and recalculate, rest and recuperate. This is a card, you know, instructing you to center yourself, ground yourself. And um, in order to make, um, you know, to make a, a wise decision, because it is possible that someone could be 
uh, trying to lure you in. And I did hear the word sinister in my mind's eye. See that? Connect to your higher self is on the bottom of the deck. So there's a need to center yourself so that you don't get distracted. I feel like you have to pay attention to something. You know, perhaps you'll be able to um, see clearly once you uh, once you disengage and then reapproach a situation. So kind of like, you know, disconnect so that you can connect, if that makes any sense. So let's see what else we got. So what is in the um, emotions of the person that Scorpio is attracting? Divine Spirit, Love and Light. What is in the emotions? Let me bring this table closer so I'm not bending all the way over. Bringing my back. So what's in the emotions? So we have synchronicity here. So with the synchronicity, I feel like that means that they're also kind of like, <clears throat> you know, maybe they're going within as well. You know, maybe there's this, this, this mirroring effect. Maybe they're having a lot of synchronicities as well. Maybe they're seeing a lot of synchronicity. Something's happening within them. Maybe they're having some sort of awakening and it's just happening step by step. Maybe they've had a grand epiphany and then they heard a song and it kind of confirmed whatever they felt. And then they're seeing signs, you know, like there's something happening in a synchronized manner. Maybe it's about what they need to purge, what they need to release, who they need to leave, leave alone because purge is on the bottom of the deck. And synchronicity is on the bottom of, I mean, is, is how your person is feeling in their emotions. So I do feel like whatever it is, that they are feeling and remember she makes me want to want her and I was feeling the word sinister and then he was saying you know how um you know her body she knows how to use it she uses it well so I do feel like maybe someone that you're attracting maybe they're connected to someone who uses sex as a weapon who could be like you know really manipulative with when it comes to sex when it comes to um, their interaction with this person that's wanting to come towards you. Maybe someone was in a relationship and they're having this epiphany that something does not serve their greatest good anymore because they're looking at it like they need to purge it. They need to let it go. Um, how does this person Scorpio is attracting feel about Scorpio or towards Scorpio? How does this person Scorpio is attracting feel towards Scorpio? Thank you, spirit. And it says connect to your higher self. So they feel that you're very connected to a higher power, that you're highly intuitive, that you're very, very um, perhaps psychic. They feel that you are, you know, like it's ju it just comes natural. We have Queen Latifah here just another day playing. So they feel like whatever skills, whatever gifts you have, it just comes natural. It's a part of who you are. They feel that you're highly connected though. You know, they feel like you are very, very connected. Um, and they also feel like you've, you know, you've been healing. Like you've really been doing a lot of work on yourselves internally. Um, and this has made you more, more connected, more spiritual, more grounded, more in alignment where you can see through you know, the illusions. Yeah, see, they definitely feel you're like vibrating on a higher frequency. And it's because you've healed yourself. And when you heal yourself, you begin to love yourself. When you love yourself, then you begin to know thyself. And so they definitely feel like you're, you're tapped in to some higher frequency. So what's hidden in the energies? What's hidden in the energies for our beloved Scorpios? Thank you. So the divine wants you to focus in and hone in on your gifts, your skills, whatever it is that you know you do well, whatever it is that, you know, you may deem is just a hobby for you. If you have that passion, perhaps you should, you know, reconsider, you know, working on those skills and mastering them because I do feel like they can, um, it can be lucrative. You don't know what kind of talent you're sitting on and nothing that you could do well is just by happenstance. I feel like it's something that you were blissed with to share with the collective, to share with the world. And there's going to be hermit time, hermit mode time rather. The dive, delve, go deep is really about, you know, um, going within, you know, 
That's what the, you know, the, the hermit does. He goes into his cave, dis disconnects from the outside world, from all of the chatter, from all of the distraction, and he goes within. And I feel like that's what the divine is telling you, to go within and to master your crafts, to sharpen your sword, to work on your skills. Do not allow yourselves to be distracted by anyone or anything outside of yourself. A lot of people don't know that hermit is a wizard, so he knows the answers he seeks are found within. There isn't an answer that you could get from another person that you can't get within yourself through meditation, through grounding yourself, through getting away from all of the distractions and separating yourself from all of the noise. See that? Know that self. So there's a need for you all to, you know, do some, some reflection, you know, to reflect on where you've been and where you are right now. There's a need for you all to see how far you've come because a lot of you aren't giving yourselves credit. You're beating yourselves up and the divine is pleased with you. I feel like the divine is saying like, you know, you're looking at this like, oh, it's just another day, you know, just another day. But it's like, nah, you have to look back to see how far you've come. That's the only time you should look back is to see how far you've come to to be in awareness of the progress, to be in awareness of how much you've changed. And the crazy thing is with know thyself, I feel like a lot of you have, you know, discovered who you are. A lot of you have discovered the things that don't serve you. A lot of people, I'm sorry, I thought I was hearing this noise. It was so weird. Oh, I was hearing a noise, sorry. That's the song. <laughs> it's like gunshots. And I was like, what is that? I forgot about that. But yeah, so yeah, a lot of you have definitely realized, discovered who you are through some sort of um, spiritual journey you've been going on. Maybe you've learned some karmic lessons. And when you completed that cycle, you learned who you were. So let's see what's in the outcome for our beloved Scorpios, Divine Spirit, Love and Light. What's in the outcome? So this card is, so what's in the outcome is whatever isn't growing, live now so it says whatever isn't growing is dead live now and then we have love peace and happiness by the lost boys playing so whatever isn't growing is you know whatever doesn't bring you love peace happiness if you're in a relationship that isn't growing and it isn't fulfilling you then it's dead and the divine wants you to live now and i feel like that's the epiphany you're going to have when you come up out of your hermit mode and that's why the divine is telling you to focus your time, your attention rather on something that you do well. You know, if you have a natural gift, a talent, focus in on that. You know, if you know that you're a singer, maybe look into purchasing yourself some recording equipment so that you could just record music. If you don't want to share it with the world, you don't have to. But maybe that's what the divine is encouraging you to do, to start focusing on those gifts that you have. If you're a boxer, train. If you're a singer, sing, record, write, produce. If you're an artist, paint, draw. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what the divine wants you to do because it will take your attention off of something. And it will, you know, it will help you to master this skill, which will help you to develop a talent, you know? And I feel like what the divine is saying that there's a need to like disconnect from what no longer serves you. Whatever isn't growing is dead. And if something that you are attached to or someone that you are attached to, if that connection isn't growing and if it, it isn't, um, how do you say, if it isn't, if it isn't expanding, then it's kind of like hindering you, is blocking you. And this song is love, peace, and happiness. And it's blocking you from your love. It's blocking you from peace and your happiness. And so I feel like the divine is saying that you're carrying dead weight right now. It's time for you to live now. I feel I'm hearing like parasite, parasitic energy, energy vampire, you know, ritual work. So some of you have some sort of um, spell work being done on you, some sort of voodoo. Hoodoo, juju, santaria, black magic. Someone's doing rituals and it's someone who is trying to keep themselves attached to you. It's someone who's trying to, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely um, 
That's why I was picking up parasitic energy and energy vampirism and then to see ritual work. So I feel like some of you all need to do some protective rituals, but this also could indicate that someone could be doing rituals on you, which is why you may need to take some time away so that you could hear your higher self tell you and instruct you on what you need to do. For some of you, that's why you're listening to this reading, because maybe you already had that, that, you know, that, um, you maybe you've already discerned that. Maybe you've already had some sort of notion, some sort of feeling that something wasn't right. And maybe this is the confirmation you needed. But you also have a relationship that isn't thriving, that isn't expanding you in any way, shape, form or fashion that you need to release and cut off. Because all it's doing is it's like it's feeding off of you. And if something's feeding off of you, it's sucking you of your life force and then you don't have what are you be being fed because healthy relationships are reciprocal therefore you nurture it and water it and they do the same so that's how it flourishes and blossoms but when someone's feeding off of your energy it's sucking you dry and it will leave you feeling um it will leave you feeling drained confused And then we have um, Just To Get A Rep, playing by Gangstar. So this could be someone, like I said, who could, this could be someone superficial. Because if someone's just interested in getting some sort of reputation, um, maybe this is someone very superficial. Someone who's like, someone who uses you, you know? Someone who likes to be in the spotlight, likes to be seen, likes to be heard. But this energy is definitely not um, conducive to your betterment. And some of you need to make a judgment call in regards to um, how you're going to handle this situation. So let's go ahead. We're going to um, get some additional messages. I'll pull some messages from numerology. Let's get the split going. So on the split, we got compassion and synchronicity. So I said synchronicity, synchronicity. So synchronicity came out twice. So there is a mirroring effect. And the divine is saying compassion with 99 nine and 87. So 99 nine is 9, reduces to 9 because that's 18. And 1 and 8 reduces to 9. And then we have 87. So that's 15 and that's 6. So I feel like the divine is telling you, to not judge yourselves or the situation. They want you to be aware. You know, I feel like this is just a call to be aware. But you're also having signs and synchronicities. You're also seeing, you know, certain indicate you're receiving certain downloads, I should say, you know, and that's why the divine is telling you to dive, delve, go deep, because, you know, you could be missing some really um, clear signs and it's very easy to do when you have a lot of distraction around you so divine spirit of love and light let's see what's coming and going out going on for our beloved Scorpios divine spirit of love and light what's coming and going out going on for our beloved Scorpios may I have a message of love and of light divine spirit of love and light divine spirit Love and a light. So I'm gonna cut the deck. Thank you, spirit. Bottom of the deck, overall energy. So we have pride. And this reduces to 10. And that 10 reduces to one. So someone's pride caused some sort of ending of a relationship. Someone was very proud, egotistical. And then we have um, Brian McKnight, you should be mine. So someone was very um, proud, you know, to let you know that they wanted you. And I feel like, you know, the energy surrounding the situation with the rest and rejuvenate, you know, that emotional withdrawal that the divine is encouraging you to do. It's so that you could see that someone's pride and someone's ego was a little inflated. Individuality. You need to separate yourself. You needed that time to separate yourself from someone because maybe there was this codependent type of relationship or connection that you had with someone 
I feel like with this 11, that's speaking to the downloads because, you know, that's like a portal that's opening up. So maybe, you know, someone received some downloads. Someone started to receive some sort of synchronistic, you know, messages. There was something that came through. And I feel like it's the fact that they realize that you should be theirs. And maybe like I was picking up someone that they're connected to is probably throwing sex at them so that they will stay, so that they will, you know, um, maintain whatever that control was. Maybe that's why ritual work was being um, emphasized in the reading. Maybe the person that you're attracting has someone who doing who's doing rituals on them to try to keep them there, like love spells and honey spells and maybe just, you know, using their semen in spells or putting their, you know, uh, menstrual blood in their spell work and feeding your person anything goes but there's something that your person is having some sort of synchronous like some sort of download they're receiving some sort of messages and the message is that number one because brian mcknight in the background is singing you should be mine so maybe they're having a real you know that reality check like damn scorpio is my, actually my person not this psycho broad here but I think that um, with this individuality, I feel like this is someone who's realizing that they have to separate themselves from someone that they are with and they're listening to their intuition. You see how this happens with that synchronicity and there goes the downloads they're receiving. They're listening to their intuition. We got 11, 11, I mean, a one, one, which it reduces to two. And then we have two, two. So someone's absolutely listening to their intuition when it comes to what they want, what they desire. And it is that you should be theirs, not what whoever or whatever they're with. Maybe in the past they allowed their pride to get in the way of this connection. And I feel like for you, you know, maybe through the rejection that you may have felt, you went into like this emotional withdrawal. And you two may not be communicating because you created space. You made some sort of, um, you know, you created a healthy boundary so as not to get hurt again. So as not to feel like you're being strung along. So let's go ahead. Divine Spirit, 11 Light. Thank you, Spirit. So we have completion. What did I just say? Your person is wrapping up a karmic relationship and someone's trying everything to keep them there including sex because remember i was picking up on the word sinister when the song um art of seduction so someone's trying to seduce them with sex trying to use sex as a weapon and that's what i was picking up on and your person is saying nah this situation is complete they're ready to wash their hands of it because they realize like you should be theirs they realize that their connection with you is far more profound and they also realize that they needed to, they should have made an effort with you they didn't. And I feel like because, you know, with this 13, which reduces to four, I feel like they realized that they did not really solidify the connection with you. They're having some sort of epiphany because the you should be mine is here. And then we have this yellow. This yellow card represents that solar plexus. The solar plexus is the sun within. Not only does that deal with the strength, your courage, but it also deals with someone healing. It deals with, you know, healing past traumas. It deals with illumination, clarity, truth. So someone sees that you are very much tapped into your high vibration, to a vibration that they feel drawn to. They see that you have this very beautiful uniqueness. You're spiritual, you're intuitive, you're loving, you're nurturing, you're caring. And these are things that draw them to you. You should be mine. And then they have this card of effort. They know they need to make an effort. Because maybe, like I said in the past, their pride, maybe they was egotistical. Maybe they had a lot of women throwing themselves at them and they would thought they could just like pick and choose. Hmm, you, hmm, you, you know what I'm saying? And so they completely discredited the discredited or disregarded, I should say, the connection they had with you. But now they're realizing and feeling drawn to come towards you. And we have Chucky Booker games. So they was playing a lot of games which prevented them from making the effort to come towards you, which prevented them from, you know, trying to see where, you know, to see where things would go with you. So they played a lot of games and they know that you're connected to your higher self. You're highly in tune. You're highly tapped in and you ain't going to put up with any games. 
So this person knows that they're going to have to come at you right. And at 13, they're going to have to come at you bringing stability, bringing security. That reduces to four. They have to come to you balanced. So, yeah. So divine spirit of love and light. What messages do you have for our beloved Scorpios? How does this person feel about our beloved Scorpio? See, what did I say? They know you're tapped into your higher self. They know you're spiritual. This is 7-7. Seven, seven. And 7-7 seven, seven is a very angelic number, a divine number that represents that crown chakra as well. So they know that you're, ha you're, you're, you're tapped in. That's the crown chakra. And this is how they feel. Spirituality. They know you're not going to put up with their games. They know you're not going to put up with any of their fuckery, their mind games, because you're tapped into a higher power. And they know that they played a lot of games, but they know that you have a very strong spirituality that you're tapped in. And that's what they're drawn to. They are looking for that as well, because maybe they know like they need to stop playing games. They're getting too old for the bullshit. Maybe they're looking at their future now and they're realizing, like, I can't continue like this. You know, it was fun back when I was young, but to be, you know, in your mid 30s, pushing your 40s or even to be 40, pushing 50 and you're still playing games, still breaking hearts, still doing a lot of things that, you know, you're going to have to answer to karmically. They like, damn, I got I got to do better. <laughs> but I feel like somebody's having an epiphany and it's that. They know that they need to wrap up some sort of toxic cycle, some sort of toxic connection, some sort of toxicity. Because with this nine, that represents the highest number of change. And these downloads that they're receiving with the synchronicity card, it's like boom, boom, like they're getting beat in the head. They probably go into bed at night and that's what's on their mind. And they're, they're, they're also feeling remorse and regret because they know they played a lot of games with you. And they're realizing like you were you were like always someone who always had just good energy, good vibration. And they're like, damn, how did I play with that energy? Like, how did I play with my Scorpio when my Scorpio was like always showing love, always being like honest? They appreciate your transparency. They appreciate your authenticity because maybe they got played. And that's what brought them to this epiphany also, is that maybe someone that they gave a chance, they ended up playing them. Because what you put out there, intentionally or not, it's like you're going to have to pay for that. And I feel like with this teaching and learning, maybe you taught them by disconnecting and separating, you know, just kind of like creating um, space. But I feel like your person has been learning and you've been the teacher. Because this could possibly be like a twin flame scenario here. Twin flame, soulmate, whatever you want to call it. A divine connection, divine partnership, your divine counterpart. This is one of those scenarios where you could have very well be the teacher. You could have been teaching this person by the way that you responded to them, reacted to them. By you separating yourselves from this connection or creating a healthy boundary. This could have awakened your person, activated them in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And I feel like with this 12, because this 57 reduces to 12, which reduces to 3, this is, you know, how they had you. They had you kind of waiting around for them. Maybe for a long time, that's what y'all was doing, kind of waiting for things to take off, waiting for this person to just wake up and see what was right before their eyes. And so maybe now this person is, like I said, like with that, you know, that three also indicating the solar plexus. I feel like now there's this like, ah, uh, you know, they need to be courageous and come towards you and, and apologize, you know, and be forthcoming. You know, tell you exactly what it really is, because maybe they did. They hadn't, um, you know, maybe they hadn't been honest with you, you know, about what was going on. You know, and I feel like, you know, for the most part with this teaching and learning, a lot of you have, you know, learned a lot as well. And then we have um, Method Man and the Angelo break up to make up. See that? So this could be someone for some of y'all in X. Maybe this is how your person was. Maybe your person 
was with another individual in the past and they had this you know dynamic where they would break up and they would make up they would break up and maybe you caught the person at a time where they were on you know they were on a, um they were on a break with their person and then maybe they reconnected but now they're finally realizing like i need to wrap this cycle up because it's not working for me it's toxic so Method Man and D'Angelo, breakups to makeup is playing right now. And so this person definitely has learned a lot from their experience, but I feel like you coming into their life has also taught them a lot about themselves. They're starting to see themselves better, you know? So let's see. Why is um, hone your gifts here for what's hidden in the energy divine spirit? And we have parenting. So what's hidden in the energy, hone your gifts for some of you. With the 63, that reduces to 9. Some of you may be giving birth. I feel like some of you may be um, pregnant. Maybe you're having um, a baby next month. Because this 63 reduces to 9. I said next month. Um, well, it's possible. You could be a Scorpio pregnant. You know, so some of you could be, you know, pregnant with child and could be giving birth. You could be coming close to... Um, you know, to your delivery date. For some of you, you are already parents. And maybe that is one of your most prized, you know, possessions are your children. Is like you love your babies. You take care of your babies. Maybe you're having some, you know, some issues with the other parent to the child. And the divine is telling you to just continue to hone your skills, your gifts. You know, maybe some of you need to practice patience. Maybe some of you need to, you know, help your children tap into their gifts, tap into their um, talents. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe, um, let me turn him down. But yeah, maybe some of you need to like start, you know, encouraging your children uh, in ways where they're starting to discover what their talents are. You know, maybe some of them love to read. So maybe, you know, encouraging them to write a book. I've seen stories where there's like nine-year-olds writing books. This one nine-year-old got like four books on Amazon. And they've been bestsellers. Like there's amazing things that can happen when you encourage your children in a way that helps to develop, you know, their talents. I feel like, you know, even honing your gifts um, could also speak to, you know, you being highly spiritual and not looking at things from an emotional standpoint with the other parent, but look at it from a standpoint of, you know, let me work with this other person because I know it's best for my son or my daughter or my children. Hone your gifts could be like honing the gift of you being a healer because I feel like with you being, you know, highly spiritual and connected to your higher selves, a lot of you are healers. A lot of you are shamans. A lot of you have that healing, you know, characteristic. A lot of people come to you for healing. A lot of people come to you for advice. They seek advice. They seek, you know, just to be in your presence or your energy because they feel this loving and nurturing um, energy from you. And we have on the bottom of the death, the rebirth. So many of you have transformed. I feel like the divine is reminding you that you can transform a situation that has been kind of toxic or, you know, that hasn't been very healthy by just the way you're perceiving it. That could be why that compassion card showed up during the pre-shuffle because it's about not, not judging, but looking at things with another set of eyes. And when you're connected to your higher self, you're looking at everything from a bird's eye view, you know? And the song that we have is um, Melissa Morgan, Do Me Baby. But hone your, your gifts. I definitely feel like the divine is telling you to be, be more sensitive to the situation if it involves children. Like it's easier to break up with someone and move on with your life when you don't have uh, children with someone, but when you have children, it's very important. It's very, it's imperative to try to work with that other parent, regardless of how 
toxic it may be. That's why I feel like the divine is telling you to look at the situation from, you know, a different vantage point because you got to separate your connection with that, that person and think of your child. So it's like, don't even look at it from the standpoint like, oh, I can't stand his ass. He gets on my nerves because it's not about you and that other parent. Or you could be saying, I can't stand her ass. She gets on my nerves, whatever it is. I don't feel like it's about the relationship between you and that person anymore. I feel like you've already made the decision that the two of you are done. So I feel like more so try to encourage and support the cultivation of a relationship between the child and that other thought and that other parent, because you're highly spiritual. You are a healer, a shaman, a light worker. And I feel like the divine is wanting you to heal this connection because you absolutely can. This yellow, like I said, deals with the solar plexus and the solar plexus is your power. So you are, you are strong enough to do that. You know, the divine is letting you know, and you're strong enough because you've changed, you've transformed. The 16 reduces to seven. So they want you to listen to your intuition. And this is also a blue card. So this is about communicating. So perhaps the divine is telling you, like, change the tone in which you communicate. Start implementing some of those gifts that you have, because if you can help friends, you know, maybe you have a lot of people that come to you for advice, friendships that are really like, you know, they're like, oh, my God, like, what would I do without you, Scorpio? You're just so you just made me feel better. And I feel like you could do the same thing when it comes to healing a relationship you may have with the other parent. And they want you to to perhaps like listen to your intuition, like be mindful of the way that you're communicating. Be mindful of the way you're communicating. Because someone does love you, but they don't know how to express it. I know that you're over, you know, you're over that connection because, you know, it's toxic. And again, I'm picking up two different people. I feel like you're attracting someone who's still in a partnership, but they're severing those ties, slowly getting out of it because it says completion. But then I feel like some of you have, you know, like a, a you know, I don't like this term, but I'm going to say it anyway, just so y'all can better understand it. It can connect for some of you. You have baby daddy, baby mama issues, period, point blank. <clears throat> and maybe you feel like they did you wrong in the past. Because she's saying, do me, baby. Maybe you feel like, you know, this person did you dirty in the past. They didn't treat you right. And that's why some of you are kind of like, you know, maybe the parenting portion of the connection is really like choppy. It's really, you know, it's a mess. Y'all are probably, you know, bringing in y'all drama into conversations that should just be solely based on, you know, how the children are going to be taken care of or who's going to get the child one week from the next. Like, you know. Stop focusing on the connection, the relationship the two of you had, because I feel like it's done done and start focusing more on, you know, making sure your child has what the child needs. Um, but we got this rebirth here. So that, like I said, transformation and that's your energy. This is the death card. And right underneath that, we have abundance. So I definitely feel like, you know, the sooner you. You know, sever the ties with this ex. Sooner you, you know, release this ex, you know, emotionally, energetically, the sooner that you stop with, you know, having all of this resentment, frustration, anger. I feel like you're going to be blissed with abundance. Like you're going to be blissed with somebody who's absolutely and specifically meant for you. And I feel like the divine wants you all to have a better relationship you know what I'm saying? For the sake of the children. And we got the nine here. So it's like you got to wrap that cycle up. You're not together anymore. The highest number of change is saying like you could change the dynamic. It could be all about the children. It's possible. And we got Onyx playing shifty. So you was dealing with a shifty low down person. It's, we know that because we've seen a thousand readings showing how that person abandoned you, Scorpio rejected your love so that they could chase after some third party that ended up shitted on them. Some of them may start coming back around, trying to send you, you know, heart emojis and reaching out more consistently now because that connection broke down. 
whatever they chased after, whatever grass they thought they was watering, they realized it was plastic, it was artificial, and it wasn't real. And so now, you know, for some of you, this person may be trying to come back, trying to, you know, trying to soften the blow that you initially felt, but there's no way to do that when you already felt the pain, you already felt the heartache, you already felt rejected, you already felt abandoned, you already felt disappointed, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like you've transformed because of that situation, and that's what the whole point was. So let's tap in. Why is this dive delve go deep here for the out, um, what's hidden in the energy? And we have music. So I feel like what was I saying with that energy of honing your gifts, maybe some of your children could be, um, maybe they're talented, like I was saying, and maybe some of you are talented. Maybe some of you need to really start tapping into your creativity because it's powerful. I feel like you also need to encourage your children to do so. I also feel like you all, you know, yeah, they want you to develop these talents that you have. I feel like a lot of you are musicians. A lot of you play instruments. And I also feel like the divine is saying someone's being shifty because they could be encouraging me to pay attention to the song that's playing now, which is again, Onyx Shifty. And the way that the hook goes is shifty, low down, gritty and grimy. So maybe somebody, like I said, that you know, and we got 32, which is the number five, which is about challenges, changes, conflict. You know what I'm saying? This is the ops, the opposition. And they want you to go down, dive, delve, go deep so that you can know that somebody's been very, very snakish. Maybe for some of you, that could have been the other parent. Maybe something comes to light during this uh, Mercury retrograde that's going to take place next month. I feel like there's some honest communication coming your way, but we do have one more card here that needs to flip over. All right, so patience. So the divine is telling you to be patient with a situation, and this is the number two. So they want you to make a, like, a decision, like, you know, based off of, you know, like I was saying, like, don't just rush and make a decision. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to really, like, you know, be balanced, be in alignment, tap in, tune in. That's why they was, you know, they was like encouraging you to like really connect to your higher self. And you also need to be patient with some results if you are, you know, expecting to see things go a certain way, <laughs> go a certain way. Let me get some water. <gasps> got the hiccups. And the song that's playing now is Diggable Planets, Rebirth of Slick, Cool Like That. So someone's trying to play it cool. You know what I'm saying? Someone's trying to play it cool, but deep down they really like, they're really on fire. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like this is somebody that you are super patient with. Maybe this is that person I was picking up on who's trying to wrap up a cycle who wants to come in. But I also feel like, you know, somebody tries to play it cool when it comes to you. You know, and I feel like the divine is saying, you know, patience is also a form of action. You know, so many of you may have, you know, you, you still stayed busy. Many of you was like honing those skills and those gifts. I feel like um, everything happens in divine time and we also have to take that into consideration. But I feel like with this communication, I feel like there's communication coming to you and the divine is telling you to be patient because someone is going to express something to you that you wasn't expecting. And it's because this person was just acting super cool, nonchalant, perhaps. So let's see. Why is um, whatever isn't growing is dead here for the outcome for our beloved Scorpios? Why is whatever isn't growing is dead? Here for the outcome for our beloved Scorpios. We got two purple cards. Thank you. We got an indigo card. We have yellow and we have envi environment. So whatever isn't growing is dead. Some of y'all need to move. This um, 44, that reduces to eight. 
So some of y'all, I feel, truly needs to leave whatever environments you're in because it isn't fulfilling you, it isn't nurturing you. And I don't feel like you can expand there. I don't feel like you can thrive there. I feel like for some of you, it may really be detrimental to your health. Maybe it's causing depression. Maybe it's causing, you know, anxiety, stress, frustration. This 44 reduces to eight and eight is the infinity symbol. So the divine is reminding you that you got infinite possibilities. You know what I'm saying? You got infinite possibilities. You cannot limit yourself. Whatever isn't growing is dead. Live now. So even a relationship, because this is green, so matters of the heart. This green card could speak to emotional, you know, just your emotional health. Maybe someone isn't good for you because that relationship is, like I said before, where it's just like more parasitic, where it's like energy vampirism. It's just kind of sucking you of your life force and you're feeling very drained, stressed out. And it's causing instability in your life instead of stability. You don't feel secure. You don't feel happy. So I feel like the divine is telling you, like, you know, don't sit around and act like things are good. You got effort here. Someone wasn't making the effort. Someone isn't making the effort. Or maybe someone will come in. This 13 also reduces to four. And I feel like. I feel like the divine is I'm hearing it shouldn't be this hard. You know, when love is in the air, when love really exists in a partnership, it's never hard. It, it, it's so it's so seamless. So, you know, some of you may need to like really take some time to discern whether or not a relationship is good for you anymore because maybe you've outgrown it. And so we have prosperity, abundantia, and naive cycles and rhythms. So you got to honor the cycles and rhythms, just what I was saying. You know, you got to realize, you got to know when something isn't working. And then we have my boo playing by Ghost Town DJ. So, yeah, maybe this person in the beginning started out to be like, you know, someone you really love. Maybe you knew this person since you was young. Maybe y'all grew up together and it's hard to disconnect. But the divine is saying, like, you got to honor the cycle rhythms of not only your energy levels, but also your emotions. Because something isn't growing, something is dead, something is stuck and stagnant. And I feel like it has a lot to do with, you know, whoever you're with at this time, whatever connections you're in. The divine wants to shower abundance. This is the second time prosperity showed up. And I feel like this person could possibly be like delaying whatever abundance the divine is trying to shower you with. Divine spirit of love and light. What messages do you have for our beloved Scorpios? I just saw boundaries. So you need to set boundaries. For some of you, for those who didn't. Because I know most Scorpios have set boundaries. Y'all are not with the okie doke. Y'all ain't playing no more. Y'all are over the games. You are tapped and tuned in. Some of you, on the other hand, are still, you know, we are all in different phases and stages of our journey. Which makes it beautiful. Because we can all help each other, encourage each other, inspire each other. And that's why I opened up the comment section so some of y'all could hear one another's stories and how, we, you know, you've gotten out of some toxic situations. Divine spirit of love and light. Let's see what's tap coming in, going out, going on. Let's tap in. And this is the goddess guidance deck I'm using right now. All right, spirit. I heard that's good. Let's cut the deck. Bottom of the deck. Nematoma, sacred space. So you all need to, um, exactly. Wow. Yeah. So that's what you all did with that R&R &R there. I feel like that's what a lot of you did. A lot of you took some time out and you really connected with your divine, your higher self. I feel like a lot of you started to receive answers in relation to a relationship or in relation to a connection you may have had with someone because Ghost Town DJs is playing um, my boo and the word that's um, standing out is ghost. 
So I feel like someone ghosted you, someone rejected you. And, it, um, you know, they was very proud, very egotistical, but I feel like that's what ended a connection. I feel like a lot of you started to work on yourselves during that time away. Maybe you really started to, um, you know, tap into your spirituality. Yep. Look at that. Sorceress is on the bottom of the deck. Rhiannon. So this is very interesting. That's what you all started to do. You developed your talents. You realized how powerful you were. Started to develop your, your spiritual talent. I feel like a lot of you started to manifest. You started to set your intention and you started to see things actually materialize in the physical rea you know, in this physical realm. And I feel like a lot of you um also just focused more so on your spirituality, on your development, on your health and wellness, on your happiness, on your peace, on your healing. Then you did that person. And I feel like, you know, with that teaching and learning, as you started to work on yourself, that may have activated something in, you know, one of your divine partners. Because now they're wrapping things up. They're starting to see synchronistic acts. So divine spirit of love and light, why is um, synchronicity and completion here for the person that Scorpio is feeling, how they feel in their emotions? And we have blossoming. See that? So I'm definitely picking up on the fact that your person now, they started to see that a connection that they were in needed to, to wrap up. It was, things were changing, their feelings were changing. Um, they may have had some sort of grand epiphany, but I also feel like they started to see um, the potential in perhaps relationship with you. You know, they started to have uh, some sort of, give me a moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm picking up on the fact that with the synchronicity card and then the blossoming, it's almost like, you know, they started to realize that they had to change. There was things they needed to change. And that partnership or a connection that they were tied to, it wasn't like, it wasn't nurturing them in the ways that they thought. And so they truly began to work on themselves. I feel like, you know, as, as they separated themselves from a relationship that may have been toxic, that's when they started to work on themselves. And they started to realize like, dang, you know, I got a lot of work to do. And so they started this process and they're very determined to, you know, to grow, to evolve, to become better because they had some sort of epiphany here. It was like they received a download with the synchronicity. There was signs, you know, maybe their angels and their guides were working with them to show them the right way. And I feel like, you know, what this person, you know, began to realize is that, you know, a connection with you was more profound you know and the song that's playing is the the only one for me again another Brian McKnight song the only one for me I can't make this up so they realize that you're the only one for them this person is you know they, as they do their work as they wrap up a cycle and start to work on themselves because now they're starting back at ground zero once you you know complete and wrap up a cycle it's a new beginning it's a new voyage. And so now they're looking at it like, dang, you know, the connection with you is hot, far more profound, far more satisfying, gratifying. And then we have the arts express yourself through creative. So maybe this person started to receive like messages in the music. Maybe they also um, are clap audience. Maybe they listen to songs and it's very nostalgic. It reminds them of you. And I feel like because you're tapped in, it's like they're sending you telepathic messages, psychic messages to let you know that they love you, to tell you that they miss you, to tell you that they're coming for you. I feel like this person definitely is seeing the light. It's like they're having some sort of epiphany, like they know who you are to them. And I feel like you know also because you're so spiritual, you're psychic, a lot of you could also be clairaudient. And we have the arts. I feel like many of you are singers and that is your gift. That is what you are here to do. 
Many of you play instruments. I feel like when you do that, you kind of lose yourself in the music and it takes you into like a flow into a, you know, this, this realm of this place of peace. So why is connect to your higher self and spirituality here? Okay. That was too many cards. So there's definitely something someone really wants to get, you know, off their chest. They have a lot that they want to say, and I'm very um, interested to see. So we have past life Isis. Annie, leap of faith, white Tara, sensitivity, Mother Mary, expect a miracle, Quan Yin, compassion, green tea, start delegating, and home, Vesta. So they definitely realize that this connection is more profound with this past life. Perhaps this is someone that you've been connected to in a past life, a former connection. That's why I was picking up soulmate, twin flame vibes. And this person may have been very proud and very egotistical. And now they know they have to make their way back toward you. And they're a little afraid because they don't know what, how, what kind of reception they will receive. But they're willing to take a, a, a leap of faith. I feel like they weren't as sensitive to your feelings in the past because of their pride, because of their ego, perhaps because they had a lot of options and they discredited you to some degree where they rejected you. And so now they're feeling more sensitive. I feel like the connections that they did make, the people that they left you for, they realized that they weren't good for them. Those relationships were very harsh. I also feel like with this song playing, they realized that you're the one for them. Whoever they chose, definitely it was a superficial, artificial situation. It wasn't real love. It wasn't um, authentic. And they started to release, receive the signs, the synchronicities. With expect a miracle, some of you, this person may surprise you. They may, I'm hearing they may have a surprise engagement, a surprise, you know, destination wedding. For some of y'all, they may just knock up on your door. Some of y'all, they may call you. For some of them, they may send you an email, a text, just, you know, pouring out their feelings, their heart, their love. For some of you, you all are receiving some sort of like spiritual download, like you've been blissed with some sort of gift. And this gift has a lot of, um, it has a lot to do with your spirituality, which can, you know, help you help others. You know, this is about having faith in your prayers, your petitions. So whatever prayers that you sent up to your angels, guides, ancestors, into the ethers, they're being answered. And I feel like for a lot of you, you know, because I was picking up on the fact that you um, need to not judge anyone from your past. We got to get past the past and the way you get past the past is by healing it, showing compassion, not being judgmental, but just understanding that we all come into union for a reason, for a purpose. And it's to learn and you have to love yourself as well as others to know that this is all a journey. Don't overwhelm yourselves. I feel like with that connection, it was more you giving and not receiving. It was not reciprocal. And so I feel like now you're not putting up with that because you know your worth and your value, which was something you had to learn because you did your soul work. And those changes that you have made has triggered someone to want to come towards you. Many of you are starting to, you know, focus on having a happy home, love, peace and happiness by um, the lost boys was playing earlier. And that's what you are manifesting. That's what you're focused on. On the bottom of the deck, we have fertility. So you are the divine feminine and you know your worth, you know your value, you're a master manifester, but you're also highly creative. I was picking up on the fact that some of you may be pregnant and may be giving birth next month. And so with this fertility card here, I definitely feel like some of you all are, you know, developing new projects, you're developing new ideas, you're accessing new ideas and you're going to give birth to new, new conditions. An exhibit is saying what you see is what you get. So I definitely feel like some of you all are, you know, manifesting new into your lives. You're manifesting a lot of um, abundance. When I said manifesting, Diana or Diana came out focused intention. So that's what you all are doing. You're developing your skills and your talents. What you see is what you get. 
So when you connect to your higher self, whatever those visualizations are, whatever that vision is, if you hold that, that's what you're going to get. And for a lot of you, that has developed a very more, prof a, a, a very, a very more, <laughs> it has developed a, a very profound um, ability for you to um, manifest what you desire. Because remember, Rhiannon came out during the pre-shuffle. And Rhiannon is a very magical being. She knows how to, you know, turn her thoughts into reality. And the divine is saying that through this, you know, this person feels like you're manif you know, you can manifest. You know how to get what you want. You also have this infinite supply. So you, and the song is playing, remember, is what you see is what you get by exhibit. So this is you exhibiting, you know, that knowingness that you can manifest what you want by focusing your intentions. When you keep your attention, your unwavering thoughts and feelings on what you want and you focus on what you want, on your target, on your mark, then you'll get it because what you see is what you get. So that means that you have a very strong ability to, to attract your desires, to attract. And the divine is saying infinite supply here. So all of your needs, wants, and desires are going to be supplied for all of your todays and tomorrow. And look what's underneath that. So abundance here, look what's underneath that. What was I saying about you having delays? You have to release the past. You got to let go of the past in order for this to come in. And I do feel like this abundance, this is a part of the rewards and recognition for the work for you dis discovering for many of you that you are shamans, that you are healers and you're starting to utilize those gifts. You're starting to embrace it. You're not running away from it. You're not shying from it. So why is hone your gifts here in parenting? So we have bold just flew out. So bold, be bold. Don't shy away from this situation. I do feel like there's an ability to heal. I'm hearing healing and honing your gifts. If you are naturally the spiritual being who can focus her intention or his intention, then you absolutely can heal a situation between the other parent if you're having um, some sort of baby mama, baby daddy drama or issues. You have to be bold. You have to approach it. In a way where you could correct the situation. And the divine is telling you to, you know, take a risk. You know, maybe you need to reach out and call them. But they want you to look at things from a different perspective. I feel like a lot of you are absolutely seeing falcons. Some of you may have recently seen a rainbow. And that rainbow is like, you know, that's like a smile from God. That's like a, a, a smile from the divine. You know, it's just a reminder that they're with you, that they're there. And I feel like you have to trust your intuition when it comes to healing a situation with the other parent. That's why I was picking up on like your tone, communicating like effectively. Remember, not not being judgmental, show compassion. Because everyone has gone through pain. I definitely feel like there was a lot of confusion in the past and it's possibly because someone could have been under some sort of spell. Maybe they were not being their authentic selves because someone had their ass under a spell, was doing root work on them. And that could have been the reason why the two of you, meaning you and that other parent to your child, could have been like bumping heads and going through this conflict. But the more that you hone your gifts of spirituality and you start to tap in from a different perspective, not a pain, uh, not a perspective of I was done wrong or a perspective of a victim mentality, but from a perspective of that healer, that shaman, then you'll be able to discern how to heal this connection for the betterment of your child. Because that's what's most important in this scenario, not your feelings and not the other parents feelings, but your children and how they're coping with this situation. You know what I'm saying? And we have purification. So with the great cleansing, this is about cleansing. This is about, you know, releasing. And we have ain't nobody. So ain't nobody else prepared or best, best fit to do this but you, Scorpio. Not the other parent because they're not prepared 
to approach this situation from a spiritual perspective, from that higher perspective. Maybe the two of you are coming at each other from an emotional perspective and someone needs to come from, you know, that spiritual and logical perspective. Maybe they're being logical, you're being emotional. You know what I'm saying? And the divine is telling you, tap into your spirituality, connect to your higher self and handle this situation from that perspective. I hope that makes sense. And then purification. This will help to cleanse a situation, to cleanse it. You know, it'll help to heal it, I'm hearing. Some of you need to do um, detoxes. Some of you need to purge people, places, and things. Some of you need to do spiritual baths. Some of you have someone doing root work, ritual work. Not only on you, but on your person. So some of you may need to do some rituals to protect not only yourselves, but also the father or the mother to your child. And we ain't nobody playing. The divine is saying nobody else can do this but you. You're best fit for the job. All right. So why is Dive Delve go deep here along with music and patience? Why is Dive Del go deep here for the what's hidden in the energy for Scorpios? Thank you. And it says, easy does it. Easy does it, beloved. And it says, there is no need to force or rush things. Everything is occurring in divine timing. And what does patience mean? And what was I saying about divine timing earlier? Everything happens in divine timing. Patience is a form of action, so there's still work to do. And it's telling you to listen to this song. Ain't nobody that could do this but you. So don't try to rush anything. You have to trust the process. You have to trust the divine's timing. Because that is the true perfect timing, is divine timing. And so they want you to take some time to go within. Take some time to go into that, that space of, you know, connecting so that you could see things clearly. Because you're going to have to take action and you're, you're going to have to like stand in your power when you do. And you're going to have to just stand, you know, for what you believe in mostly. But there's nothing to, there's no need to rush anything. The divine wants you to really like center yourselves, connect to your higher selves. Because that 32 and that 2 reduces to the number 7. So you have to listen to your intuition. Nobody can do anything. It's up to you. And you have to trust the way the things are working out for you. This, these two just kind of jumped up. So whatever isn't growing is dead. Live now. Environment. And you have your prosperity card right there. So this is the outcome. You're going to be very prosperous, very abundant. And this is why the divine is saying, like, you know, for some of you, you're going to be very stable, very secure. You're going to be set up beautifully. Got bright future on the bottom of the deck. You're going to be straight and you have unconditional love. So you have, this is why they was telling you, like, if something isn't growing, it's dead. So that means, you know, a relationship. That's why they're telling you for some of y'all, y'all need to dive, delve, go deep because maybe you're working on a connection that's dead. It's done. And it's okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But maybe, you know, through you going within, you'll be able to discern that. You'll be able to see that clearly. And so that's why they're telling you, like, easy does it. The music ain't nobody. This person isn't your person, perhaps. Maybe the person that you're holding on to and grabbing and clutching on to may not be your person. Because whatever isn't growing is dead. So they want you to see that there's a relationship that is not expanding. And so it's time for you to live. It's time for you to start living for yourselves. It's time for you to be independent, self-sufficient, self-reliant. A lot of people may be attached to someone, you know, that isn't helping them to develop, that isn't bringing stability, that isn't bringing security. But the divine is saying the sooner you release that is the sooner that you can have exactly what you desire. You have unconditional love, prosperity, and then you have bright future here on the bottom of the deck. So this is what the divine is saying is your outcome, is you're going to have absolutely a lot of abundance. This is prosperity. The universe is pouring the abundance out to you, but you have to be open. How can you open up if you have someone 
who's attaching themselves to you. That's keeping you stuck and stagnant. So you can't be receptive if you're still stuck to something that's sucking your energy. So you have to pay attention to what's in your environment. You have to pay attention to what's going on around you. Because there's things that's happening around you. And what could be happening is someone could be doing something to, you know, delay or to block your blessings. So that's why they're telling you to dive, delve, go deep. The song that's playing right now is Stress by Organized Confusion. So there's something. Remember I was telling you maybe your environment is causing you stress and anxiety and frustration. And that's what's playing right now is stress by organized confusion. And this is organized. And I was talking about this ritual card. So someone is like intentionally doing something to cause confusion, to cause frustration, to cause some sort of delay. And you're going to have to, for some of you, move away. For some of you, you're going to have to disconnect. You're going to have to get away from someone who is keeping you stuck and stagnant and blocking your blessings. The divine is saying you got to open yourselves up to receive. Many of you are closed off because you're suffering from depression, suffering from heartache. But this person that you're suffering from this, this, this heartache and heartbreak energy is doing this intentionally. There's unconditional love that's wanting to come in, someone that's really truly wanting to give you what you desire. And the divine is telling you, like, you got to love yourself. No matter how it may appear, you have to love yourself. Self-love is always more important. And that's what this green indicates as well. The green represents the heart chakra, which is the fourth chakra. And so, you know, something is affecting your, your health and wellness, your happiness, your peace. Remember, love, peace, and happiness was playing when I was clarifying whatever is and growing is dead or when I was pulling that card. So something isn't going to bring um, expansion and love and, you know, that that emotional fulfillment and contentment you're seeking. The divine is telling you, you got a bright future ahead of you as soon as you let go of this mess that isn't serving you. But the, you also, if you're worrying about things, they're telling you not to do that either because everything is working out just fine. You just have to be, you know, proactive, you know, because patience is a form of action. And we got the Ten of Cups in the bottom of the deck that we're going to use for the reading. And we also have the Queen of Wands. So you see that? There goes the other woman. There goes that energy of, you know, the mistress. And she could have broken up a happy home. You know what I'm saying? Through some sort of spell work. Through some sort of ritual work. Maybe someone chose that energy over you. Because that Queen of Wands could be very attractive very passionate yeah we got the two of cups here so you're coming into union the two of cups represents you coming into a spiritual connection with someone i feel like with that hermit card that's what you all are being encouraged to do is to go into that hermit mode so you can see your way clear so you can know what's best for you what you need to do because I definitely feel like someone was kind of like, you know, breadcrumbing you along in the past. Very proud, very egotistical, thinking it was all about them. And I feel like ultimately you started to see clearly, you know, that that relationship was, you know, it was full of crap. And it was because that person, you know, they didn't do their part. I am sensing that someone wants to communicate. And I am sensing that this person... You know, is someone you may have like created space with. You haven't, you're not in the same vicinity as this person. There's distance, so there may be travel necessary. I'm also feeling like that person may reach out and communicate with you with that Eight of Wands. And we have the Four of Wands. So someone is aware that you are their twin flame. They're aware that this connection with you was definitely more solid, <clears throat> more stable, more secure. Look at this, the wheel. So you did go through some sort of karmic lesson. I feel like your person also went through a karmic lesson and that's why they have the completion. And I feel like with the wheel, it's also speaking to things that are inevitable. So there was, um, you know, it was inevitable for you to go through this. This was a part of, you know, your, your soul's mission. But someone is rushing in towards you. Someone's ready to take action and come towards you. And I hear like out with the old, in with the new. And we got TLC creep. And so someone definitely, you know, they may try to sneak back into your life. 
you know, and this is someone who's coming in assertive. And this is that person who found balance. Like they was confused in the past, but I feel like they are coming back prepared, ready to communicate. You see that sword? And they're rushing in towards you because they do feel like they have to get some things off their chest. They're coming in balanced as well. And they're coming in assertive. So the bottom of the deck, look at that chariot. So the same person that you created space with that you had to do that R&R, &R, rest and rejuvenate, rest and recuperate because you were broken from that situation. I feel like they're going to try to creep back into your life. So you may receive, like I said, communication. They may send you a random, um, random text or some of them, they may visit you. They may travel to see you. I'm seeing here with the three of wands that this was someone who kind of like was very stagnant. Like they was very just like dragging their feet. And they kind of kept you waiting. And now I feel like they're ready to come in. They're ready to rush towards you now. And I feel like that they're kind of creeping their way in. Like, you know, trying to sneak back in. You know, because maybe, you know, maybe they realized somebody that they was dealing with was creeping on them. And that's why they're ready to come to you. So someone they was dealing with could have been creeping on them, creeping around. We got the Queen of Cups here. So how this person feels in their emotion is love. And this person definitely um, sees your worth and value. This is your energy. This is your energy. So you got the chariot and the queen of cups. So this person is receiving those downloads. They're also realizing, you know, that it's going to take patience for this process to come toward you, to offer you their cup, to communicate these feelings, to express to you how they feel. But they are coming in confident. They are coming in. You can see like behind this, you know, this um, feminine energy here, there's like a tornado. It's like a tornado whirl. So it's like they're going to come in so fast and it's going to shake. I'm hearing it's going to shake your world. You know, this person is like coming in to shake your world and you don't even recognize. You don't even see they coming. You know, they don't they don't. Uh, maybe their feelings hit them and they didn't even you know, realize they got the knight of swords. So there is communication because how they feel about you is they want to get some things off their chest. They could have said some things prematurely in the past. Yeah, they was being a fool. But I also feel like this person is wanting to, um, you know, take some sort of risk. They want to offer you an apology, I feel, because he has this flower, you know, and it's almost like, you know, apology. It's like, um, you know, because they, they made... They made a mistake in the past and they know it. And we have um, little Kim, no time for fake ones. So they know how you're feeling and your, you know, how they feel about you is that you don't have no time for games, that you're tapped in. They know you're highly spiritual. They know you busy manifest and they see this because they do watch you and they want a new beginning. And I also feel like this person wants to extend some sort of olive, olive branch some sort of apology because of the way that they've behaved in the past. They know that they were foolish, but they want a new beginning. They want to try again. They want to start again. And they're trying to be courageous. They have this, you know, this desire for a new beginning, but I also feel like they have passion for you. And they're, you know, they're a little apprehensive because they know that you're highly intuitive. What's underneath that is the Queen of Swords. And she don't put she don't do too well with people trying to insult her intelligence. And this is the energy of what Scorpios transform into after disappointment as you transform into that Queen of Swords and you start looking at everything logically. You start like dissecting people's words, people's body language, people's energy. But someone is wanting to take some sort of risk. They're wanting to come towards you. And we got no time. So they know that you're not going to put up with no games, no foolery, no fuckery, no mind games, no manipulation. So they know they have to come in right and exact. This is their true intention is to have a, a new beginning with you. So why is hone your gifts here for what's hidden in the energy for our beloved Scorpios? Oh, man, there it is. So we have the seven of pentacles. So what's hidden in the energy 
And like I said, you know, this is feeling like you invested in something and it not, you know, it, it, it didn't. It didn't harvest in the way that you anticipated, but I feel like you could you still invested. Your child is your investment, you know, your children's future, you know, and a lot of you are like, I'm not I don't have no time for no games, you know, but the divine is telling you to, you know, take a risk with that that parent, you know, and trust that things are going to work out. You have to trust your intuition also, but you also have to be bold. You know, and you have to, you know, speak your truths. And this is about emotional investment. So, you know, you got to invest in your children. You have to invest in your children. And, you know, you also have to encourage them to be their greatest versions of themselves. And the way that you do that, you know, a healthy way to do that is by, you know, it also including the other parent. The other parent has to be a part of that. And look at this, as I'm speaking of a child, we have a child here on the card. So I do feel like the divine is telling you to like, you know, I know that a lot of you are like, I ain't got no time for games. I don't want to deal with no past person. My ex is an asshole. He cheated. He lied. He creeped. He did this. He did, that. you know, but I feel like you got to separate what you experienced with them and from them and focus on the child. Put them at the focal point. You know what I'm saying? Because your children have to be, you know, you want them to be developed. And you see how there's a healer healing this elder up here. You see that? And I was speaking to the divines telling you that you have to hone your gifts. You are a healer, a shaman. You can heal this situation. Because this is, you know, dealing with family. These pentacles represent family. It represents, you know, the emotional investment. And for some of you, this could be that ex, you know, because you could see this man and this woman up here. So this could have been that marriage. This could have been someone you were in, you know, engaged to, married to, you lived with, and you all have children together or a child together. And some of you separated. Some of you feel like, you know, this person was wearing a mask, was lying, cheating. But at the end of the day, that has nothing to do with you and this person's ability to co-parent, to make sure that your child you know, is, is developing in a healthy way. You got to break generational curses. Your, 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 you and your person's disagreements and energy towards one another cannot spill over into or spill over into the relationship that that other parent has with the child. Y'all got to try to heal that because you don't want your child to be wounded. You don't want your children to be wounded by that. And we have um, Ego Trippin' by De La Soul. Ego Trippin'. So some of y'all remember pride, ego. Someone's ego was out of, out, of, out of control. And that could be why a lot of y'all are like, it's difficult to deal with this person because when I speak to this person, they can't see their wrong. But maybe it's not meant for you to see their wrong. Maybe just start from a clean slate. You know what I'm saying? Clean slate. They're telling you to take a risk and be daring. So try something new. That's how you're daring, by doing something different. When you do things the same way, that's kind of crazy. So don't approach that person with the same tone or the same proposal. Do it from a different pr perspective, like try a different way. Yeah, that person was an egotistical maniac. Yeah, that person may have been, you know, selfish as hell. Maybe they may have abandoned their child for a spell. But I feel like you have to work with this person in order for your child to get the best of both worlds, meaning their parents. And you have to make a sacrifice. You got to sacrifice. So there's four cups. This is definitely like, you know, that energy of feeling like there's missed opportunities. But this also represents like, you know, being able to see, you know, that there's opportunity, you know, that there's still some sort of window of opportunity for things to improve. So there we go, Hierophant. Dive, delve, go deep. We have music, we have patience, and then easy does it. So many of you definitely, you know, maybe some of you are seeking counsel, maybe someone is going to a counselor. I am feeling like a lot of you are um, tapped in. You can see this Hierophant is looking up to the sky 
and he has his hand extended as if he's receiving something from the divine. And so maybe a lot of you are receiving the messages. That's why the divine is telling you, look, everything happens in perfect time. And you're expecting something. You're waiting for something. And you have to trust your intuition that it's going to come. You also have to pay attention to the signs and synchronicities. I feel like many of you have also like, you have gone into, you know, maybe some of you are like learning, you're developing some sort of skills, some sort of talents. And you're expecting, you know, to hear from someone. You're expecting to hear some news. Maybe some of y'all are taking some classes. Maybe you're taking music classes. Maybe you're learning an instrument. Maybe some of y'all are waiting, you know, for some sort of equipment in the mail. And I feel like when you do receive this news, it's going to make you super excited. You're going to be like screaming for joy, jumping for joy. The divine is telling you just trust the process, like be patient with the process. Maybe some of y'all are being egotistical. Maybe some of y'all are being egotistical and the divine is telling you to, you know, to pay attention to your intuition. We have Juicy by Notorious B.I.G. I'm definitely feeling like communication is coming with this Knight of Swords. And juicy. It's going to be some juicy information. Maybe there's some intel coming in. Something that you didn't know. But with this Hierophant, it could be that y'all are waiting for a proposal marriage. You're waiting for someone to, you know, offer you something, you know, commitment. And maybe that same person who was too proud and egotistical could be coming back. They could be doubling back. Remember, the wheel showed up. So everything comes full circle. So maybe that past person is, you know, returning and there's this, you know, this offer. Maybe they're proposing because I was picking up like, you know, I picked up on the fact that someone could be like surprising you with some sort of proposal and engagement. You know, and we have justice here. And then Juicy is playing. So whatever isn't growing is dead. I feel like somebody's receiving some sort of karma. But I also feel like there's some sort of news coming in and it's going to be juicy. And I feel like, you know, this could be in relation to matters of the heart. Someone could be telling you like, yo, I love you, you know. And I feel like not only will you have love, but you will also have prosperity and I feel like you know there was a lot of betrayal hurt and pain but I feel like for what you've gone through you're now receiving you know things are turning now in your favor you're receiving a lot of blessings now things that were being delayed things that were being blocked are now coming in because it's a part of your karma and I feel like you know with this juicy playing I feel like news is coming in Perhaps about some sort of lies, deception, someone backstabbing you. You're going to learn some sort of juicy details about what took place. And it could be from the person that you have separated from. Maybe you've had some sort of divorce, separation. And um, I think that, you know, now that Ten of Swords reduces to the Ace. Now there's clarity. There's, there's a greater, more profound understanding of what you was experiencing and going through. But I also feel like, you know, you're going to hear about this, this third party. You're going to hear about this mistress. You're going to hear how, about how she was sabotaging this, com this connection. How she was doing ritual work. You're going to hear something juicy about, you know what I'm saying? Because the devil is in the details. And this is a partnership. The four wands represents a divine union. And someone was doing something to cause, you know, this, this, um, to cause this confusion, this conflict within that partnership. And you could see here, if you look at the picture up here, it's like there's three people, you know, and these two are bruised and wounded. And they're leaning on one another for survival. 
while this person is kind of sitting here like extending their hand as if to heal them but I don't feel like you know because she's so focused I feel like that person is leaving them you know whoever your person was for some of you Scorpios who were in a toxic relationship they're being you know they're leaving behind that past person you know that mistress and you know this is you know what they're realizing is that they destroyed something very sacred and it's because maybe they were being influenced and I do feel like y'all are going to hear some very juicy details because juicy is playing. You're hearing some juicy details about some sort of mistress, third party. So let's clarify these messages. I'm a deep diver for all who are listening, as you could tell, because we are one hour, 30 minutes into the reading. I'm going to use... Um, Tower of Sexual Magic. And we have this Queen of Swords here. So I do feel like there's communication coming in. And there's also some sort of clarity, some sort of truth about a third party. So whoever your person left you for, they realize that your person, I mean that they're karmic. Or that the karmic was creeping and sleeping around on them. And they're realizing that, you know, they're realizing that truth. And that's why they have the completion in their energy. What was I saying about like the art of seduction? Well, there, there, there it goes. They was using sex as a weapon. And you and your person, you know, they may have cut you off to go after this person. We have your All I Need by Method Man and Mary J. Blige. So someone's realizing you're all they need. They don't need to be tied to no crazy broad doing no damn voodoo hoodoo juju. We have the five of chalices. See this? Five of chalices, eight of pentacles, nine of swords just all flew out as I was shuffling. So there's definitely someone who is going to come back and they made, you know, this is the same person who has regrets and remorse. You see how he's bending down, asking for forgiveness. You're all I need to get by. And you see this energy, this body language, this feminine here. I feel like for you and this person, because remember the art of seduction was playing. And so I was picking up that someone was going to try to seduce you, try to get you into bed. You know, so be mindful because look at her body language. She's not into it. You know, he, she, he thinks because they were intimate that now things go back to the way they were. And she's like riddled with confusion and probably regret for doing what she did. So for some of you, just because someone returns doesn't mean you have to hop right in the bed with them. There was definitely someone doing, you know, spell work, trying to, you know, use sex as a weapon, trying to entice someone, art of seduction. You know what I'm saying? Because I see this little cat and cats definitely speak to like when there's, you know, ritual work, spell work being done. I remember that energy was there. Your person is trying to or is breaking from some sort of spells that was done on them. And they're realizing that you're all they need. They're realizing that you're the one. So let's go ahead and clarify these messages. Why is this chariot here for what's hidden in the energy for our beloved Scorpios? Why is the chariot card here for what's hidden in the energy for our beloved Scorpio? And we have justice. So there is someone coming in with a truth to speak. And you can see they are rushing in. And this is going to surprise you. It's going to shock you. But I also feel like there's, like I said, truth that needs to be spoken. And this is, you know, everything I feel that's happening is happening in divine timing. I feel like it's going to be fair. I feel like you're going to real you you someone's receiving karma. I feel like this is a part of your karma. I feel like you were involved in a third party and now you're going to have some sort of closure. You know, because you've been healing from this, you know, this situation for a while. Maybe someone's going to confess that they were being egotistical, they were being too proud. 
and I feel like someone's going to reveal their true feelings. We have the lovers here. Maybe someone is realizing like, you know, that past person isn't someone they love, but you're the one they love because you're all I need by Method Man and Mary J. Blige is playing. So they could come in and say, you're the one that I need. How does um, Scorpio's person feel in their emotion? Why is this Queen of Cups here? How Scorpio person feels in their emotions. Why is the Queen of Cups here for how Scorpio's person feels in their emotions, Divine Spirit? And this Justice card was actually on the bottom of the deck. So, yeah. And they feel the Queen of Pentacles. So they definitely know that they have a lot of love for you, but they also realize they could see your worth and value. Now, they didn't see it before, but now they're fully aware of who you are. And we have the Hierophant here. This person definitely could see a future with you, marriage with you. They could see themselves proposing to you because we have, like I said, Method Man and Mary J. Blige are all I need. So they're realizing like you're absolutely all they need. You're the full package. They could see themselves investing in you emotionally. They could see themselves building a future with you, having children with you, growing a family, having a home. They could see emotional and financial contentment because you have your own. You're doing your own thing. And this is attractive to them. They also feel that you are like very spiritual because this Hierophant is a very spiritual um, energy. So they know that you're tuned in and tapped in. They also feel that the two of you may have some differences which could have caused them to kind of be afraid to run away from the connection because maybe they were listening to other people say like, y'all are too different. Maybe y'all are from different you know, um, backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds. But perhaps now they're having this epiphany, like that's exactly what I like about my Scorpio is the fact that they are different. The fact that they have that mystique, that mysticism, they're spiritual beings, they're healers, they're in tune, they're caring, they're nurturing. They're giving, they're kind, they're loving, and they're honest. They can appreciate those attributes. Whereas before, they were thinking that it, 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 the differences were too much. But now they kind of like that, you know, the two of you may be opposite in a lot of ways. And that's what draws them to you and attracts them to you even more. So why is um, connect to your higher self here for how Scorpio's person feels? Why is this fool? So we have the lovers. So they know that they love you. This is like a deep connection. They know that you are their twin flame. They know that they were acting foolish in the past. They know that they took a risk and now they are like regretting it. They know that they were doing dumb shit. And they know, you know, the song that's playing right now is Large Professor Breaking Adams. So they went against the grain. Instead of growing the connection... You know, and, 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 you know, expanding this partnership, this union, they, they did things that they now regret, but they want to start again. And I feel like they're listening to their higher selves as well, which is pushing them towards you. But this person, you know, they, they got involved with some sort of third party and you closed up and clammed up. That's the body language that I see here with you is when you discovered, you know, you may have knew without knowing. Maybe some of y'all, you know, discovered just by, you know, running into some sort of evidence that your person was sleeping around. But I definitely feel like whoever they was dealing with was definitely seducing them. This looks like a very seductive energy, this feminine here, this feminine energy. She was seducing them and she was also using love spells and they was foolish enough to fall for it. And I feel like for you all. You tapped into your higher selves and you may have discovered all of this without even being told the truth. You just knew because you could pick up on their energy. You started to see their, they, they started to change towards you. Their attitude towards you started to change. And I feel like for a lot of you with this eight of pentacles, I feel like that's what, you know, you, you, you started to grow distant because, you know, maybe the sex wasn't the same. The intimacy wasn't the same. The conversations, the feelings. Maybe you, 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 for some of you, when you had sex, maybe someone called you someone else's name. Maybe you noticed the way that they touched you was different. 
the things that they were doing with you were just different. And that's when you knew like something isn't right. Something just isn't right with my person. And so that's why you kind of clammed up and you created that boundary. And I feel like, you know, this could have caused um, the ending of this connection because you realize like this, this something is just, this isn't, this isn't right. This isn't real. So why is um, the seven of pentacles here? Why is the seven of pentacles here? Why is the seven of pentacles here, divine spirit, for what's hidden in the energy, divine spirit? Why is the seven of pentacles? Thank you. That flew out so hard. Look at this. See that? So this is someone who knows that they invested in the wrong thing. Because this is, you know, in the song, Beyonce, yes. So they said yes to the wrong person. And now they're regretting it. There's remorse. There's regret. You invested a lot. And they was only focused on filling their cup. They didn't fill yours. I feel like the two of you guys are definitely like at odds. You know, this person is not um, pleased with himself. He's very regretful, very remorseful. He's riddled with remorse, as is this feminine energy. I feel like the two of you just grew more distant. Or this could be the energy of your person and their mistress, which is what I'm really feeling because I feel like with you is the seven of pentacles. You was investing in someone who was being the seven deceptive. This is the seven of swords. So they was like, while you was investing and in planting roots, they was creeping and saying yes to other women. They was sneaking around. And I feel like that's what the divine was saying. Like, you know, be patient. Everything happens in divine timing. And instead of focusing on how this person betrayed you and deceived you and replaying situations in your mind, focus on honing your skills, focus on your children. And some of you, it was very difficult for you to co-parent with that person because of how deeply they betrayed you and hurt you. That ten of swords showed up, so that shows the magnitude of pain and hurt, trauma that not only you experienced, but also maybe your children. And you was dealing with someone who was definitely getting root work done on them. The devil card. This is someone toxic. This is a codependent relationship. This is someone who's very, you know, narcissistic. And this is someone who's a trickster. So they will deceive you to get what they want. And I feel like your person may have gotten deceived. But a lot of you were saying yes to someone who was just constantly saying no, showing no, not giving you time. And maybe now this person wants you to say yes to take them back maybe now but the divine is saying that this individual you could see they were being ruled by their phallus sex sex is a weapon this is like you know being seduced and we got the two of wands here so your person could have been stuck and torn look at this whenever i see this card i always see see that Someone was definitely doing voodoo, hoodoo, juju. They was doing love spells on your person to cause confusion because your person was confused. You see, this two of wands speaks to them like being torn between two. It's like the fork in the road. And so what someone was doing, they're, they're, they're dealing with the devil. They made a deal with the devil. They sold their soul. And see, this devil is still here. Same, stance, same stance, same body language. And they slept with the devil. They were seduced. And look at this energy here. This, this, this masculine doesn't look like he's even thinking clearly. And he could have been eating from this feminine energy. And that could have definitely sealed the deal with them being completely confused and conflicted. And so now your person may have broken themselves free from the spell. They've broken free from the spell and they see real. They see now, you know. Whatever isn't growing is dead is what we're about to clarify. And we saw the devil. And so you was attached to someone who had addictions, afflictions. And I feel like this connection, you know, whatever they was dealing with, whoever they was dealing with, you, you know, that connection was very definitely toxic. You know, and this person was constantly hurting you, disappointing you, deceiving you. And so we have the Ten of Pentacles. 
So someone is coming in that loves you unconditionally. And the divine is telling you say yes. Because that say yes song by Beyonce was playing. And so you're going to say yes to someone. Because you're going to realize that there is actual love. But you have to wrap up some sort of cycle. You're going to have to take a leap of faith. With someone that was being foolish in the past. Who didn't realize that they had um, real love. I feel like this someone is coming to... You know, some sort of, you know, because this Hierophant is looking up to the sky. So it's like someone's having some sort of aha moment. And I feel like you're going to say yes to this person and this relationship is going to um, develop, develop very beautifully. Like this person could see, you know, marriage, children, a future, the whole nine with you. I feel like for a lot of you, some of y'all could be doing mirror magic to manifest new love. Someone to love you unconditionally to manifest you know, some sort of abundance, some sort of prosperity. And I feel like, you know, for many of you, you know, like I said, if you're attached to the devil, that could block your blessings and that could thwart your plans and that could delay the things that you're calling in. But I feel like once you disconnect and sever the ties, karmic, you know, those car cut those karmic cords, you'll be able to have love and prosperity and this emotional contentment, this future, this longevity, this relation that leads to marriage. And the divine was playing Beyonce's yes. So I feel like if someone does propose to you, you're going to say yes. If someone asks you for your hand in marriage, for some of you, you're going to say yes. Because someone's walking away from that toxic, um, you know, karmic. Someone's definitely watching y'all with looking at me, playing by mace. So someone may be watching you from a distance. You have a secret admirer, but you also could have that because that Queen of Wands showed up in the very beginning of the split. And then she showed up again during the pre-shuffle. So I do feel like she's, you know, still there in the background and she's not very pleased with the fact that your person has ended something with them. But I do feel like for. For some of you, for the most part, I am feeling like there is like this twin flame energy that's coming in for you. I feel like someone, you know, I don't feel like this is the ex. I feel like there's two people. There's an ex and then there's someone that you had a connection with, but things never, you know, it didn't go anywhere. And it's because that person was still tied to someone that they were dealing with. So whoever this other woman is, it could be someone that's attached to the karmic or it could be someone that's attached to the person that is your twin flame. You know the story. I don't. But I do feel like there is some interference here strongly because someone was like doing things to kind of block this connection from developing. And look at looking at me is playing by mace. So I feel like, you know, this person is watching you, whether they're watching you on social media, stalking you. Um, but there is a sense that some of y'all are being watched. And I feel like the other woman, the third party is like overly focused with you. So just make sure you protect yourselves, do some um, protection rituals, some protective spells. Definitely wear your protective amulets, jewelry, you know. Maintain, um, you know, taking spiritual baths. You could take salt baths, sea salt baths, and speak your intention into your bath water. Or you could take spiritual baths. You could burn, you know, your, your uh, Palo Santo to cleanse your home. Wash your floors, you know, incorporate some Florida water. And wash your floors, your walls, your windows. Just to make sure the energy within your homes is pure. But definitely call upon your angels and your guides and ask them to, to protect you. And we have the song um, Apollo Kids playing by uh, Ghostface. So, yeah, I definitely feel someone was, you know, being very childish. And this person, you know, that, that ghosted you, they realized they were being foolish because that's the energy of the fool came out. You know what I'm saying? The fool, I believe, is, you know, that person who realized that they were foolish in the way that they behaved. And I also feel like there's deep regret and remorse from that person who deceived you. That could be the father or the mother to your child that you invested so much time and energy with. But I feel someone is going to return. 
and they're going to make a very solid offer of marriage. They're going to propose something real because they're looking for something real, something long term. They want to build a family, build a, you know, a connection because they could foresee some sort of emotional and, you know, material contentment with you. They want to have children with you. But this is your reading, beloved Scorpios. I hope that it resonated. If you found that it did, please be kind. Hit that like, that share, that subscribe button. Uh, if you are new, I hope that you stay a while. Thank you so much for tuning and tapping in to the channel. And if you are returning, you already know what it is, beloveds. Love is love is love. Until next time, Ashe.